Hello everyone! Today I want to show you this beautiful Elgin, Elgin pocket watch. It's a women's pocket watch. This movement size is 30S. It's an old style uh, ladies pocket watch. Let's open it. And uh, a client gave it to me because it was um, not working. Actually, what I can see right now is that uh, it's missing the minute hand. So I'm going to try to wind it a little bit here. So while I'm winding it, I realize that there is no pressure on the winding uh, system mechanism here. So I just turn the crown and I don't feel any pressure here. So it means that it's not winding at all. So we have a problem here. Um, probably the arbor is not engaging with the main spring or even worse, the main spring is completely broken. So there is no other option but open it and see what's going on inside. Uh, I also saw some rust here, so probably we're going to be dealing with uh, a rusted situation here. So let's open it up here on the back. Bear with me here. So let's see what we can find. Uh, by the way, this is a watch from 1919. Elgin from 1919. So let's open the back. All right. So here we go. Okay. All right. Beautiful movement indeed. Okay. So I'm turning it a little bit to see if the balance starts moving. But no, I'm winding it. I see that the ratchet wheel is moving, there is no problem with the click or ratchet wheel. Uh, so the problem is indeed inside in, in the uh, barrel, probably the main spring inside the barrel is broken or something. Uh, I'm also seeing here that there is a little bit of end shake on the balance, uh, so we also have to address that situation. It's not moving. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna use a puffer to blow some air to see if we can get this balance wheel move. Okay, no, it just moved for a second and stops. So indeed, we got to go and inspect it. So we're going to put it on the microscope and see what we can find here. All right, so on the microscope here, uh, we see a lot of rust in the hair spring, in the balance spring, a lot of rust here. And also, I'm going to use a piece of paper to show you that there is a huge end shake. I don't know if you can see this through my microscope. I'm, I'm actually holding my phone uh, on, on a microscope lens and I'm using with the other hand a piece of paper and trying to show you guys the end shake here. So I don't know if you can see that clearly but there is a huge movement, it moves uh, side to side and also up and down. So we are dealing here here with uh, a broken period or broken jewel, so we, we got to address that. So, okay, so here I am with the paywood moving the balance wheel. I don't know if you can see that, guys, it's moving, it's moving up and down. So here is the balance wheel out of the movement and it's as you can see the hairspring is completely rusted so we gotta remove that hairspring so using my staking tool to remove the hairspring and do a closer inspection under microscope here it is so definitely we gotta do something now let's take a look at the pivot so look at the pivot here is completely worn out and of course there is a worn out pivot there is a broken jewel so we're gonna get that this jewel out of the movement uh, so here it is the jewel completely broken, so we have to change that. So here it is. And also look at this pallet fork is rusted as well. So we have a water situation here. Our kind of pinion is cracked and is rusted as well. So we gotta change that. Now look at the mainspring as I told you guys by one I just suspect it was completely broken. So this is the main spring completely broke inside the barrel. Here it is. Um, I also put the hair spring into a solution. I'm gonna I'm gonna do later on a short video showing you guys how I got this hair spring 
completely clean. It was a complete process, process that took a lot of days and patient and putting putting the hairspring inside some solutions and going to watch forums and asking some experts how to to deal with this situation but i'm going to do a separate video for that so i can explain the entire process and all the fluids and liquids and and solutions that i, I had to use to to get it actually clean and i will show you uh, in another video the final result but that's going to be a a different topic because otherwise it would be a super long video so i had to order some parts i'm going to show you here in a moment uh some of the parts are simply just three of the parts out of many other parts that i had to order so we have balance tab so we had to replace that number is a69 also the main spring with a strength of 0.0055 elgin and this is the jules uh x455 uh, the juice with the hole where the balance pivots just move freely, you know, spin uh, freely. So I'm going to show you here the uh, main spring. Bear with me, guys, because I'm dealing with uh, only one hand. I'm using only one hand. With the other hand, I'm, I'm holding my camera. And uh, let's see if I can get this out of the envelope. Oh, here it goes. So as you can see, this is the main spring. Beautiful main spring. I notice it's a little bit uh, grease already, uh, so probably it's pre-lubricated. Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna use some lubrication, some oil, some grease uh, to lubricate the barrel and the main spring as well. And uh, so we're gonna put it back again. We don't want to touch it with our hands because something that breaks main springs is actually the acid and uh, and the chemicals. In our skin, if we if we touch any of the watch parts uh, with our hands, uh, we're gonna you know shorten the life of that part. So it's not advisable. So here we have the jewels for these are the balance jewels. I, this particular one is the one that belongs to the main plate. Is the one with a hole in the center. So the stuff's pivot revolves inside that uh, tiny hole. Now, you have to take into account when you are ordering parts, especially for Elgin, that the pivot size varies from watch to watch and also sometimes within the same model, it varies as well. So you gotta have a special tool to take the measurement and order the part accordingly. So here we have, I, I got three of them, so I have in case I break one, I have two more to use. Uh, so I'm going to show you here, I, I replaced it, so I'm going to show you here how it looks now. It's a perfect round um, jewel now, not broken. And here is the cap jewel. So I'm going to show you again only with one hand how to lubricate the cap jewel. So it's just a tiny drop on the center. But I'm holding my phone on, on the microscope, so the drop of oil is not exactly in the center, but that's gonna work that's gonna work okay so that's about the amount of oil you need uh, for those pivots so you can see the pivots right there perfect right now so now once you mount the uh, stuff you need to true the wheel so you don't want to bend uh, wheel so we use this special tool called caliper so we mount the wheel with the stuff we mount a balance wheel with the stuff in this tool and with a puffer we blow some air and as you can see there that is like a tiny um, metal needle that you can move closer to the wheel and uh, whatever you see that the wheel is bending to one side you can actually correct that so we can make later on uh, another video to you know showing the entire process of correcting and throwing the balance wheel right here all right so once it's through you uh, i mount it on the main plate using the balance cock and blowing some air i just wanted to spin freely to see how it looks and i, I don't want it to touch anything i don't want it to uh being you know stopped by any other part so it needs to be well centered um so here you see is moving spinning freely not touching anything so this is 
this is good. All right, so here we have. We're gonna we're gonna now test for the end shake. So this is also important. So there is no end shake here. Uh, I'm actually moving uh, in two directions. I'm moving it up and down and moving it sideways. So here I'm moving it sideways. There is no movement, no end shake. So we're ready to mount that um, roller table. So here I'm mounting the roller table. This is a very delicate process, guys. Uh, we are working with the most delicate piece in the watch, in any watch movement. The most delicate part is the balance. So be careful when you are doing this. Um, so mounting, it's advisable that you mark if you need to take the roller table and the balance uh, spring out of the balance complete, you need to mark them before you take them out. So you can you can actually place them on the right spot uh, when you assemble it again. So here we're mounting the hair spring and we're using special tool, this tool that you can see uh, that is holding the balance has a notch, has a hole actually, so the entire roller table uh, fits inside and we do not mess up the impulse stone. It's very important, so you don't want to mess up the impulse stone because then you're going to be dealing with uh, another problem and, and we don't want to have any other problem. We just want to solve uh, problems, not add any problem here. So um, we're mounting the hairspring on the right position. So we use a permanent market to mark its position in relation to the balance wheel. So we can mount it back again on the same position. If we don't do this, then we're going to be dealing with a bit error. And we don't want that because it's going to deteriorate the watch faster than what it's supposed to. All right, so we got it mounted here. So you can take a look at the, at the base that I use to hold the balance wheel. It has a hole and a notch for the impulse stone to fit in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a picture. Here it is. So you see, it has a hole and a notch. All right, so mounting the Balance complete, ready on the balance cock on the main plate. So we're going to uh, blow some air here and we're going to see it moving back and forth. So we want to make sure it's moving back and forth freely. It doesn't touch anything. So it's ready. Because here is the thing. If we don't work with the balance, mm -hmm. if we keep moving on with the watch and trying to fix another problem, uh, it's, it's worthless because if we don't get the balance up and working, the watch simply won't work. So the watch is divided into different sections, and one of the sections is the balance itself. So the balance it's a, it's a part that is composed by many different tiny parts that need to work together in a perfect way. So if we don't get the balance working, the rest of the watch won't, uh, won't work either, okay? So we're attacking one prong at a time. So we're making sure the balance is moving back and forth. And also, since I have the balance itself mounted on the plate, I can see that the impulse stone is straight aligned with the escape wheel and the pallet fork. So that is very important. So once we verify that, we're going to proceed with the rest of the cleaning. So I'm not going to display the entire cleaning process. I don't have a cleaning machine, so I have to do this manually. So I have some brushes. I have some containers like this that you can find at any grocery store. <laughs> so yes, uh, and I'm using different liquids and I do different stages. So this is uh, indeed a very boring process and tedious because I have to move each part to a different container with a different fluid and clean and uh, then I use some powder to actually uh, clean the gum top or all the oil and it's a tedious uh, process here indeed. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of the process but not the whole thing. Uh, so we can make a separate video 
uh, at least to show you the way I, I clean stuff manually. I know there are uh, a lot of cleaning machines and they speed up the process. That's amazing and that's very good. I'm planning to get one in the future. Uh, but for now, uh, I got to do it manually. Um, but for me, it's uh, entertaining and, and I can, you know, do it and do it. I think it's, it's good if you uh, at least once do it manually so you know how to, to clean a watch manually. That, that's, that's fine as well. So here we go. We're going to get actually some of the bridges out. So this one's a barrel bridge. This one is a train of wheel bridge. Or no, actually, it's the, it's the opposite. The first one that I got out is the train of wheel bridge. And the second one, this one that I'm holding now, is the barrel bridge. All right, so <clears throat> I'm using here paper towel. It's not advisable to use paper towel, but this is just the first stage of the clean. So I'm basically getting, you know, the thick, I'm getting just the gum top crease out. So after this first stage, I'm gonna put in some other fluids and, and then I, we won't be using paper towel anymore. But now we're gonna be using a little bit and also pay wood. So this is very important that you use your pay wood to poke inside each hole so you can actually unclog and you can clean all that, all the grease out of the movement. If, if we don't do that, then what's gonna happen is that when we add the new oil, it's gonna, it's not gonna be good, it's gonna dilute the old gummed oil and we're gonna have a very not good mixture of old uh, grease and new oil and that's not good for the movement. So what we wanna do here is make sure that every single tiny pore, every single tiny hole is completely clean, is completely clear, doesn't have any uh, old oil lubrication. So we gotta clean it very well. You need to use your pay wood, sharpen it, poke inside each hole. And then uh, that's gonna be, that's the first stage. So you clean that the best you can. And then second and third stage, we're gonna be using some other fluids. I use lighter fluid and I also use 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. And uh, be careful when you're using alcohol not to put your balance uh, inside alcohol because the impulse stone is held by shellac and shellac gets diluted by alcohol. Also, do not put your pallet fork in alcohol because also the uh, pallet fork stones are held in place by shellac. And shellac and alcohol don't get along. So don't do that. Alrighty, so I'm getting the bridges uh, clean. So using my puffer here to speed up the process a little bit. Yep. All right. So another thing that we gotta do here, it's to actually mount the mainspring in the barrel. So I wanna I wanna let you know, guys, that uh, I'm recording my voice uh, in a different time, the in relation to when the video was filmed. So I just filmed the whole process. I just disassembled the watch, or the parts, and did the whole thing, and then I'm just watching the video and and putting my voice. So explain the process a little bit. So here is the barrel. We we gotta lubricate the barrel and then we're gonna go and get the main spring and we're gonna put the main spring inside. Just be careful when you are doing this process to put the main spring on the right direction. So if it goes to the right, if it needs to be winded to the right, you need to mount it in that direction or if just winds to the left. So different watches have different configurations. Fortunately for this watch, there is only one possible position for the mainspring to go in because the mainspring, the end of the mainspring has some notches, has some 
a particular shaped part that just fits in one specific position. If you put it uh, backwards, it, it simply won't mount. You, you will notice immediately. So there is no way uh, you, can, you can mess up this. Uh, all right, so here is the Elgin main spring with the right strength. This is the right port. So in, it's what I notice here is that it is pre-lubricated. Um, so be careful when you are getting it out of this case. This is like a round case, but sometimes it comes in a case ready that you simply snap it inside the barrel. But this time you have to take it out of here and then put it back inside the barrel. So careful when you're doing this. You don't want to snap it up at once because it might bend, it might break, or, uh, or I don't know, you might even get hurt because this is uh, kind of like strong spring and it li likes to, to bounce around. So what you're going to do, it's uh, you're going to take one loop at a time and... I'm going to show you, just in a moment, here, okay? So what you're going to do here, you're going to take only one loop at a time, okay? So you take the first loop out, second loop out, so on and so forth. So you don't want to get it all out at once, okay? You want to go uh, slow, you want to take your time. You want to be careful here. So only one loop at a time, okay? One loop at a time. As you can see, I'm using my finger cuts. I don't want to be touching it with my uh, bare fingers because the acid and the oil and the chemicals on my skin will shorten the life of this spring, okay? So I have it out here ready. So I'm going to use some oil to actually... Uh, to actually lubricate the barrel here so i'm gonna i'm gonna use my oiler and i'm going to lubricate the barrel condition of the barrel here okay so the main spring it says that it, it comes pre-lubricated but anyways uh, i'm just gonna you know it's better safe than sorry just not just make sure you do not add that much oil just tiny bits at the bottom of the barrel and also on the side as well. So I'm doing this process really quick. When you're gonna mount the main spring, you also, unless you have a tool to put it all together, because I know, I know that there is a tool that you can actually wind the main spring inside the tool and, and you just place it all at once inside the barrel. But if you don't have that tool, you need to be careful when you're doing this and you need to mount one loop at a time. So take your time, be patient, to not speed up the process. Uh, if, if you get tired or something, it's better to put it aside, just take a cup of coffee or take a nap and then go back when you are fresh and ready to work again. All right, so we're gonna go start on this end, and as I told you before, this is a very peculiar end, so it only fits on one position. So it's very simple to mount here because it only fits on one direction. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the barrel. I'm going to show you here really quick how I did it. Um, sorry that the camera, my, my, my hands are in front of the camera. So I got to find a better spot for the next time to put the, the camera. I'm not actually looking at the camera. So at that time, I don't know exactly what the camera is catching. But here we go. Okay, so we mounted the end on the right place and now we're putting one loop at a time. Only one loop at a time. Okay, so taking my time here, 
using my finger cuts. I don't want to be touching the mainspring with my bare fingers. So one loop at a time. Having the indicated tool to do this, the process can be done in a matter of seconds. I'm doing it by hand, so it's taking me a little bit longer. But it is fun as well. So here we go, only one loop at a time. All right. Here we go. Okay. Careful here. We don't want it to go out of place. So that's another thing that might happen. So you, and actually it happened to me before. So I've been winding, I've been putting some main spring inside barrels and when I'm almost done, something happened and the entire spring comes out of the barrel and I have to start all of it again. Okay, if that's happened, it's okay. Uh, I'm actually uh, new to this hobby. So uh, I'm also learning uh, on the process. I'm, I'm reading some books. Uh, I'm in some watch forums asking experts to give me some advice on how to do this and how to do that. I'm watching a lot of videos and this is very fun. So I'm getting it completely inside the barrel. So we're already on the end here. And we're almost done with the barrel. Okay, at the end. Careful here. We don't want to bend anything. Okay, so I so dirt here so I'm using my Rodico. Rodico will be your best friend so it is excellent to get dirt out of movement, hairs, dust, even fingerprints so if you happen to touch any part with your bare fingers and, and you spot your fingertips, uh, your fingerprints, I mean your fingerprints on any part you can use your Rodico and get it clean. Also for enamel dials it's great. So these old watches have enamel tiles and you can use your radical to clean that enamel dial uh, in a beautiful way. So we are on very end of our main spring here. So one loop at a time and I will show you the end result just in a moment. Okay, couple more loops. Couple more loops. All right. Here we go. Already, so we got in place. We got in place. Okay. So I'm gonna be accommodating something here, and then I'm gonna be lubricating. I'm gonna put some grease on top of the spring and also. Uh, put some grease on the arbor before mounting the arbor and here you see guys that is the main spring inside the barrel already so time to lubricate the top part so remember that I lubricated the bottom of the barrel the side of the barrel and now I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting even though the main spring was well greased um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and and put some some grease also on top of of that main spring. So I also have a picture for you to see clearer how it looks like at the end. So adding some oil. This is important. Oiling is a very important part in the watch repair process. Uh, you don't want to over oil anything. I do actually. I uh, I'm reading. I'm learning how to do it properly because I've been working with some movement and and they are soaked in. They were soaked in oil and that's not good at all. I'm actually gonna put together a short video about a watch, a, a Bulova watch that I repaired and it was drowned in oil. So just add the correct uh, amount of oil. This is a very debatable topic, but what I know and what I what I've heard and what I've read is that mm, no problem can be solved adding mm, more oil. Okay, so just the right amount is enough. Okay, do not over oil your your movements. 
So here is my main my barrel with a mainspring and arbor all together. So I'm gonna show you a picture with the picture is gonna be a lot better. So take a look at this picture here. So it is the mainspring inside the barrel. Alrighty. So now uh, what we're gonna be doing is putting this movement together. Uh, I have all the parts already cleaned and separated on this container. So we're gonna go ahead and and take the balance out of the movement. Uh, I like to put the movement when I'm on a story, when I'm gonna put away, if I'm tired and I need to finish, the best place you can put the balance is actually on the main play itself. So that's the safest spot for the balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the balance out of the main plate and I already improvise a stand here with a piece of paywood and a plastic base. So I'm gonna get that balance out of the movement and place it right there. I'm gonna show you how I do it. Taking it out of the container. And we're gonna put it on our movement holder. We need to be very careful the balance is the most delicate part in the watch. Anybody can easily mess it up. So making sure it moves freely. Nice, beautiful. Okay. So here you see it's moving back and forth beautifully. All right. So we're going to get the balance out of the movement so we can start the installation process. So I'm going to show you how I like to place this. So for me, this is the safest place to to put a balance out of the movement. So with a piece of paywood, uh, you sharpen it with a blade, uh, you put it on any base that you might improvise or you might have, and then you're gonna actually put the balance cock right there and the balance wheel will safely rest like that okay so i'm gonna put it aside so i can store the insulation process okay there we go so it's ready safe there so we're gonna move it uh, to a safer place i don't want to bump against it or anything so we're gonna move it to a safer place we can actually go ahead and start the oiling and insulation process on this beautiful Elgin pocket watch. Uh, I didn't record, I didn't put the whole process because it's a very long, long hmm, process of putting everything back together and oiling everything. So I'm going to show you a quick video of the train of wheel already mounted on the main plate. So I'm testing here the train of wheels. So I'm making sure if I move the barrel, this cape wheel moves freely. So if we if we get that, we're good. So I have just to add the right amount of oil. We use so, some synthetic oil for fast moving parts and we use some other kind of lubrication for slow moving parts and we use some kind of grease uh, when we have more torque like on the barrel here we have a lot of torque a lot of force not fast uh, the barrel is not a fast moving part but it is the part that carries uh, the most amount of torque. On the other hand, this cape wheel doesn't carry that much torque, but it moves very fast. Here we have the pallet fork, and I'm showing you under the microscope the tiny drops of oils that we should put on the pallet stone. So here is a picture. We don't want to add too much oil, just very tiny drops on each stone. And we're going to see, guys, this watch all together again. And here we have the balance wheel moving up and back, back and forth, I mean, 
moving back and forth one more time. So we brought it back to life one more time. So let's take a closer look here. So look how beautiful that uh, balance wheel is moving back and forth. You can take a look uh, actually at the hair spring, well cleaned. Uh, it was a whole process of cleaning it. So I'm gonna show you uh, at another video how it got that done. Uh, but here we have it moving back and forth beautifully. So we're gonna put in a time graph and see what the time graph says really quick. So I have it dial up here. So that's why uh, the movement is actually placed uh, like on the, uh, on the, mm, underneath the holder here. So we can take a look at the screen here um, and what we can see is that we have a rate right now of minus four seconds a day. So that's, that's not bad for over a hundred year old watch. And uh, we have a bit error of 0 0.6 milliseconds, not that bad. So, uh, certainly, there is always a way that we can make it better, but I'm very happy with the end results of this pocket watch so far. So, here we have the movement mounted right there, you can see, and uh, we have it right on the case. The only thing we need to do uh, as the final touch is find the appropriate crystal to put in the vessel and this is completely done. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you like, uh, please give us a thumb up and hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.